On the morning of September 11, 2001, 19 men armed with box cutters directed by a man on dialysis in a cave fortress halfway around the world using a satellite phone and a laptop directed the most sophisticated penetration of the most heavily defended airspace in the world. Overpowering the passengers and the military combat trained pilots on four commercial aircraft before flying those planes wildly off course for over an hour without being molested by a single fighter interceptor. These 19 hijackers, devout religious fundamentalists who like to drink alcohol, snort cocaine, and live with pink-haired strippers, managed to knock down three buildings with two planes in New York. While in Washington, a pilot who couldn't handle a single-engine Cessna was able to fly a 757 in an 8,000-foot descending 270-degree corkscrew turn to come exactly level with the ground, hitting the Pentagon in the budget analyst office where DOD staffers were working on the mystery of the $2.3 trillion that Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld had announced missing from the Pentagon's coffers in a press conference the day before, on September 10th, 2001. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. $2.3 trillion, with a T. That's $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in America. Luckily, the news anchors knew who did it within minutes. Osama bin Laden. The pundits knew within hours. Osama bin Laden. The administration knew within the day. Terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. And the evidence literally fell into the FBI's lap. That a hijacker's passport was found blocks from the World Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. But for some reason, a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists demanded an investigation into the greatest attack on American soil in history. That investigation was delayed, underfunded, set up to fail, a conflict of interest, and a cover-up from start to finish. It was based on testimony extracted through torture, the records of which were destroyed. It failed to mention the existence of WTC-7, Able Danger, p -Tech, Sibel Edmonds, OBL and the CIA, and the drills of hijacked aircraft being flown into buildings that were being simulated at the precise same time that those events were actually happening. It was lied to by the Pentagon, the CIA, the Bush administration, and as for Bush and Cheney, well, no one knows what they told it because they testified in secret, off the record, not under oath, and behind closed doors. It didn't bother to look at who funded the attacks because that question is ultimately of little practical significance. Still, the 9-11 Commission did brilliantly answering all of the questions the public had, except most of the victim's family members' questions, and pinned blame on all the people responsible, although no one so much as lost their job, determining the attacks were failure of imagination. Because nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes in the buildings. Except the Pentagon, FEMA, NORAD, and the NRO. The DIA destroyed 2.5 terabytes of data on able danger, but that's okay because it probably wasn't important. The SEC destroyed their records on the investigation into the insider trading before the attacks, but that's okay because destroying the records of the largest investigation in SEC history is just part of routine record keeping. Federal officials have begun a major investigation into whether someone or many people benefited financially from the evil done to the country last Tuesday. Not long before the attacks occurred, there were some financial transactions in the stock market that may indicate knowledge of the attack before it began. ABC's Antonio Mora is here. Whether they ever get to, if they ever get to the bottom of it, it will be astonishing. Astonishing, no question, Peter. What many Wall Street analysts believe is that the terrorists made bets that a number of stocks would see their prices fall. They did so by buying what are called puts. If you bet right, the rewards can be huge. The risks are also huge, unless, of course, you know something bad is going to happen to the company you're betting against. This could very well be insider trading at the worst, most horrific, most evil use you've ever seen in your entire life. One example, United Airlines. The Thursday before the attack, more than 2,000 contracts betting that the stock would go down were purchased. 90 times more in one day than in three weeks. When the markets reopened, United stock dropped. The price of the contracts soared, and someone may have made a lot of money fast. $180,000 turns into $2.4 million when that plane hits the World Trade Center. It's almost the same story with American Airlines. That's a five-fold increase in the value of what was a $337,000 trade on Monday. All of a sudden becomes what? $1.8 million. And there's much more, including an extraordinarily high number of bets against Morgan Stanley and Martian McLennan, two of the World Trade Center's biggest tenants. Could this be a coincidence? This would be one of the most extraordinary coincidences in the history of mankind if it was a coincidence. It is absolutely unprecedented to see cases of insider trading uh, covering the entire world, from Japan to the United States and North America to Europe. 
ABC News has now learned that the Chicago Board of Options Exchange launched their investigation into the unusual trading last week that may have given them enough time to stop anyone from profiting from death here in the U.S. It may also give investigators, Peter, a hot trail that might lead them to the terrorists. Thanks very much. As a reminder of the complex complications here, though, the Secretary of the Treasury said today of this investigation, you've got to go through ten veils before you get to the real source. Yep. Thanks, Antonio. NIST has classified the data that they used for their model of WTC7's collapse, but that's okay because knowing how they made their model of the collapse would jeopardize public safety. The FBI has argued that all material related to their investigation of 9-11 should be kept secret from the public, but that's okay because the FBI probably has nothing to hide. This man never existed, nor is anything he had to say worthy of your attention, and if you say otherwise, you are a paranoid conspiracy theorist and deserve to be shunned by all of humanity. Likewise him, 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 and her and her and her and him. Osama bin Laden lived in a cave fortress in the hills of Afghanistan, but somehow got away. Then he was hiding out in Tora Bora, but somehow got away. Then he lived in Abbottabad for years, taunting the most comprehensive intelligence dragnet employing the most sophisticated technology in the history of the world for a decade, releasing video after video with complete impunity and getting younger and younger as he did so, before finally being found in a daring SEAL team raid which wasn't recorded on video, in which he didn't resist or use his wife as a human shield, and in which these crack special forces operatives panicked and killed this unarmed man, supposedly the best source of intelligence about those dastardly terrorists on the entire planet. Then they dumped his body in the ocean before telling anyone about it. Then a couple dozen of that team's members died in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. If you have any questions about this story, you are a batshit, paranoid, tinfoil, dog-abusing baby hater, and will be reviled by everyone. If you love your country and or freedom, happiness, rainbows, rock and roll, puppy dogs, apple pie, and your grandma, you will never ever express doubts about any part of this story to anyone. No, I always imagine myself making great plays, but you never think about being MVP. Investigate 9-11. A 9-11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. All right. Is everybody all right?